Greetings and good health to you and welcome to another issue of Open Up with myself, Silo Makekanube. And as always, we start with a quote. And today's quote comes from Malcolm X and it says, education is the passport to the future for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. Well, my guest today is a global multi-award winner, a well-known business authority, mentor, erudite speaker of note and I must dare also say that he is a debonair gentleman <laughs> you know bloke Mudisa he always talks about I mean he used to call himself debonair, debonair. Yes, yes you know yes, yes. and my lord you are thank you yes thank you. and he's a senior diplomat and a cutting-edge strategist an academician with an outstanding record in planning managing and executing highly successful private and public sector initiatives in Africa, Europe, America, and Asia. Please sit back and relax as I start my chat with His Excellency, Professor Dr. Ambassador Tal Edgars, QC. That's quite a mouthful. Thing. What a title, sir. <laughs> and I think for me, you know, I mean, I think first when I met you, Yes. And looking at your titles, and I just thought, wow, what an achievement, you know. Mm. But, mm. And, and I remember there's a young man seeing QC. Right. And wondering, but what does this QC mean? Right, right. You know, and I went and, you know, looked into the dictionary right. on abbreviations right. and right. Queen's Council. And later on, I, you know, read a little bit more about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. But for a young man, Prof, yes. who's out there, right. who hears all these titles and sees QC. What does QC mean? So QC actually means Queen's Council, mm -hmm. right? And I, I'd want to probably revert back yes. to the first quote you put out, yes. right? Mm -hmm. The opposition to that for me is formal education will make you a living. Self-education will make you wealthy. Say that again. <laughs> you know, I love, you, you, you know, you, I love it when, 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 when pastors are like, I don't think you heard me. Yeah, Let me say yeah, it again. Yeah. <laughs> yes. In South Africa, quite mm. generally, we believe under the notion of formal education. Yes. We? we are formally in a system where we're educated. Mm -hmm. And I say there's a difference between information and knowledge. Right. So formal education will make you a living. Mm -hmm. Self-education will make you wealthy. The, yes. So... If you're born in a township, the first thing you're thinking about is the impossibilities of what you cannot do. Mm, mm -hmm. Not the possibilities of what you can do with that which you know. Yeah. So the Queen's Council is a caliber of lawyers mm -hmm. who have an outstanding record around the world mm -hmm. who now sit and advise the Crown. Okay. And for most people, it's like asking a runner, and I always do the same numbers in the world, mm -hmm. in the Olympics, the best right. team is from Jamaica. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The fastest team is from Jamaica. Yeah. Usain Bolt does about 4.26 mm -hmm. by himself. Right. What people have never known is that three of his teammates did 3.28 as a team, but nobody has ever tried to run against him. So does that make him the fastest mm -hmm, man? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or does that make him the uncontested man? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is exactly what I became. I became yeah. the person who believed that it's uncontested space. Yeah. Until somebody contests for it, then Absolutely. it doesn't make it impossible. So that's mm -hmm. what QCs are about. Okay. People who have broken the record in certain legal precedents mm -hmm. and now are able to advise the Crown. And, you know, we think about diplomats. Yes. And when we think diplomats, we think, you know, is a diplomat of South Africa. Right, right. Great Britain. Right. You know, whatever country. Right. And yours? Diplomacy is a very big notion that has been misconstrued. Mm -hmm. Now, there are career diplomats, high commissioners, yeah. people who represent the state. Then there are other diplomats who are part of an initiative you serve. In the AU, you've got special envoys. Mm -hmm. In the United Nations Security Council, you've got special envoys. Right. In royalty, we have special envoys. Right. So diplomacy is not entirely entitled to state. Mm -hmm. It is entitled to special interests. And those special interests come mm. in very many few areas. And yeah. so I have served different capacities, different governments, mm -hmm. and different interests around the world. Yeah. That is my level of diplomacy. Okay. So I have served with Shea Blair under the Africa Justice, where we have been looking at what are the legal precedents that have been going on around the world? Mm -hmm. How do we 
how do we look at the social injustices and how do we table that? Yes, yes. When you talk about the United Nations mm -hmm. um, people of African descent, right? everything that happened and the question of reparations. Mm -hmm. When you talk about the, um, His Royal Majesty, the King of the Ashanti, yeah. who I serve and as a special envoy. Mm -hmm. So there's so many different interests is, that, yeah. you, yes, mm -hmm. that, that you sit and then you become a diplomat. Right. But ideally, you're not just going to restrict yourself to state. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tal. Yes. Where was Tal born? Born in South Africa and raised in exile. Mm -hmm. Long story is, you have picked more languages, more cultures, mm -hmm. more history, right. than what is ideally just restricted to a textbook. If you were born in South Africa, and I look, mm -hmm. at, I look at our history as rich as it is, yeah. we have not identified the difference between Pan-Africanism, Black nationalism, Black consciousness, right? Mm -hmm. And so the average person is thinking, let's talk about being Black. Yeah. I don't talk about being Black. Mm -hmm. I talk about being African. Right. Because if you were in exile, then you understand that Africa was not just an identity of a state. Mm -hmm. It was an identity of a collective people. Mm -hmm. A 1956 OAU government was not created out of South Africans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. South Africans who are part of the Francistown massacre were not South Africans alone. Mm. We had Nigerians, we had people from Botswana, oh, people yes. from Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. Why do we then feel that the things that intimated us into self-independence are the same things that separate us? Right, right. So growing up in so many different countries, you started to appreciate the diversity of 6,000 languages around Africa. Yeah. And that was something else. Africa almost, I think it's almost like being at a, pla at a place in a state of disrepair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If we were going to start maybe even embarking on it, right. from your observation, you know, having been, I think, a global person and mm -hmm. even, you know, working in Africa, right. what could we do to make things better? And if ever again, if you can maybe even touch on where did we go wrong? So it would bring us to the first initial idea of who made it go wrong. Yeah. And, and I think that's a conversation we don't like to have. We have it mm -hmm. in closed doors. Yeah. The thoughts of Leopold Sengo, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Sankara. Yes. Kwame Nkrumah. Mm -hmm. Mwalimu Julius Nyerere. Yeah. Kenyatta. Mm -hmm. Nelson Mandela. Yeah. Or Tambo, you name them. Mm -hmm. Robert at, 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 mm -hmm. at a point, mm -hmm. we all had one voice yes. of an identity that needed to come into place, and we needed to support an African dispensation. Mm -hmm. But then let's let, let's question that dispensation. Yes. All right? And mm -hmm. let us start with our own country here yeah. today. Our South African constitution is very young, mm -hmm. but we are very quick to intimate what the Western civilization looks like, a constitution that has existed for over 200 years. Mm -hmm. we, we cannot be able to match that. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So when we are testing the flexibility of our constitution today, mm -hmm. we must test it under the ambition and understanding that it is very young. Yeah. It is not yet at a point where we can ask for all the liberties that we seek to understand. Then, and yeah. that is the problem. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how fast a car is, it cannot outrun the ground. Yeah. And that is what we are doing. Mm -hmm. We are trying to outrun the ground. We are trying to do 500,000 things in five years. I hear you. Let, let us be honest. You yeah, cannot change you. poverty mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In, a 30, in a 30 years. There must be something that you're going to live for and die for so, within a space of time enough for people to be able to feel there is change. Mm -hmm. But then there goes the problem again. Mm -hmm. Are we looking for change? Are we looking for transformation? Yes. Change is what happens to a frog. Transformation. It, it was already a it was already a frog when it was born. Yeah. And then now it just grows into a frog and, yes. and and then we look at it and say, Wow, we have changed. No. We're asking for transformation. People are becoming more and more aware. People mm -hmm. are becoming more and more prone to want to challenge. Right. But we are stuck to a very preoccupied idea that our identity is fixed to that change of the frog. We talk about you talk about Transformation. Yes. If we're going to talk about transformation of us as a people, right? What are the things that perhaps we might have to look into 
mm -hmm. to make that transformation possible. So the first thing we must start to accept is what are the non-negotiables of a country, mm -hmm. all right? And I'm not talking about the irreducible minimums mm -hmm. where we say, okay, so we are trying to push 60% of youth who do not have jobs. Yeah. We are trying to get jobs. Mm -hmm. We have 300,000 graduates we're going to keep on shield shielding out of the country, right? Mm -hmm. Out of that, 48% of them are going to move into other countries where they take their own you know, idea of what they are and who they are, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Then you take the statistics that comes back from SARS. Right. We pushed 10,000 to 28,000 people mm -hmm. right from the middle income. Mm -hmm. w what am I saying? Numbers don't lie. Yeah. All right? If we had a focus where we are saying, out of the 60,000 people, we are not just creating jobs, mm -hmm. we're creating skills. Yeah. But our education system creates jobs, not skills. Good. You and I come from a world where if you taught me woodwork, mm -hmm. then you give me a department to run in government. How am I supposed mm -hmm. to be talking to you about information technology? I did woodwork. I'm a carpenter by trade. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. And then now we have a system that shields and has shelved out people who are older, but we need their skills. Mm -hmm. They were mm -hmm. here at a tougher time. Yeah. How yeah. do we return that education back to enable that the younger generation can be able to appreciate it so that this vacuum stops to exist. But, and, but we find ourselves, you know, I think working in an environment where I guess youth is more celebrated than, you know, the senior persons mm. in our community. Mm. Mm. How, 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 you know, why is this, I think, focus on just saying the youth, this, the youth, this, and how right. can we best deal with it so that there is basically an intergenerational right. interaction. Right, mm -hmm. right. And I think that is a misconception in itself. Yeah. There's a Nigerian joke that we always have where we say there's a difference between youth and youth. Mm -hmm. so, so youth is the younger one and youth is us. Okay. We, we've refused to let go that okay. we are not youth. <laughs> okay. We are holding on to it, right? Okay, right. I hear you. <laughs> and so... There's the idea that there's a next generation. Mm -hmm. There's no next there's generation. generation yeah. There's a new generation. Mm -hmm. And the new generation does not hold bars as to age. It holds bars as to knowledge, right? And that knowledge is not ideal based on age. It's mm -hmm. limitless. Yes. You can be 70 with the ideas of a 30-year-old. Mm -hmm. So it has never been a prerequisite mm -hmm. that just because your age limits the idea of youth or whatever, we mm -hmm. are looking for new ideas, Yeah. not next generation ideas. And so when you come to us and you say, but we want to have an industrial revolution, mm -hmm. let us question it. Yes. Can we move so fast to have an industrial revolution when we've got 60% of the youth Mm -hmm. who don't have those capacities? Is, is it okay? Mm -hmm. is, it, is it okay to fly Cuba doctors who are in the same school with South mm -hmm. Africans? You know, what, 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 what's, the, what's, what's, the, what's the irreducible minimum? What exactly is a mm -hmm. benchmark when we say mm -hmm. critical skills? What are yeah. we talking about? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? We have surgeons, we have doctors, we have IT, we have animations, videography. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are building things faster than the economy can accommodate. And so there are so many skills that are in the periphery of the economy and not the epicenter of it. At a country where we talk about the Industrial Revolution, we still mm -hmm. have a system mm -hmm. where when you get to go to home affairs, they say the system is down. You explain that to me. What went wrong? Yeah. Is it that our systems are slower? Is it that our systems are not, are not adoptive? Mm -hmm. Then let us take another one, an innovation space. Mm -hmm. As much as we've created everything, and we love listening to the Silicon Valley in the US, yeah. we have no Silicon Valley in Africa. No protection of ideas, no sandbox policy. So our, our young youth who are coming in and saying, I have an idea, it mm -hmm. is as much as wasted as me pouring water on the ground. Because who protects the idea? Yeah. Now I see in this design space, Louis Vuitton can wake up and they use an idea that came from Eastern Cape. Mm -hmm. This Basutu blanket's been here forever. I know. Why is it we feel okay paying 40,000 rand more because it has the stamp the of Louis Vuitton? <laughs> <laughs> you know, as you're talking, I'm forced to ask this question. Yes. That if things are happening the way they are. Yes. This basically says there's something wrong with the leadership. 
Mm-hmm. Yes. And when our leadership, you know, I, I remember I was having a conversation with a friend. Yes, yes. And we were talking that um, we had hoped mm. that, for instance, when the ANC took power, mm. they had learned the lesson because right. they had been through all the African countries. But we were the last, mm. Mm. you know. Mm. And we thought that whatever happened in those African countries, they would have learned. Mm. Why is that the lessons never came through or even never manifested themselves in our country? Two things I take out of that argument is the first thing is the leadership would not be the problem. Mm. The leaders don't, they, they don't get there themselves. Ah, I hear you. If we are to go back to what the legal precedence is, is mm-hmm. sovereignty lies within the people, not within the leadership, within the I people. You. I hear if you. you start to understand the power of your vote, mm-hmm you start to accept the decisions that you're making today. The leadership is a consequence of what the people voted for. Yes. We must get to a point where we have a knowledge-based economy. Do the youth understand this? All right? Mm -hmm. Second thing is we need to understand the education system we have. If we are going to say we need 80% participation of women, what kind of leadership do we need to produce 80% leadership of women? Exactly, yes. So we still have a patriarchal system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you're trying to correct a wrong that is not in policy. If you and I were to sit down, and I ask this to even the young people, and I ask them, how many of the policies have you actually seen and read? The BE chatter, have you ever seen the original? Half of them don't. They've never seen it. But they're quick to say, we have no opportunities. No, you don't have because you're refusing to educate yourself. The second part is, it's a chain reaction system. If we decide that the youth are going to get to the streets and they're yeah. going to riot, and they're go- mm-hmm. please do understand this. Yeah. When you riot, the taxi system stops. When the taxi system stops, the transport is affected. When the transport is affected, your entire family stops moving, going to work. When they start moving, going to work. The municipality prices hits a hike. Mm-hmm. When it hits a hike, it affects the fuel. Mm-hmm. There's nothing that happens without a chain reaction. So before we actually get there, can we first of all take a sit back and ask, what's going to be the chain reaction if I vote wrongly? Prof, you're blowing my mind. <laughs> and, and, and the way you're blowing my mind says to me, what you are saying now yes has got to be translated yes. to the young minds out there. Exactly. And But also not even just as the young mind, even myself, mm-hmm. you know, because we got to have to start having a conversation around that. Quite true, quite true. Have you ever thought of things or even methods that we can use to even begin to have that conversation amongst ourselves, like as, as I was saying, right. the intergenerational right. conversation, yes, yes. but also even the awareness mm-hmm, mm-hmm. of our importance, because I think for me, mm-hmm. that's what seems to be a problem. We don't realize that we matter. True, mm-hmm. true. I, I think the first thing to just think about, and, and perhaps, you know, uh, slightly vexing aphorism, mm-hmm. my grandmother, and, and I was raised under the hands of greater people yeah and i read from chairman mao mm-hmm. to to the sankaras yes. to, mm-hmm. and, and i tell younger people read widely and wildly yeah understand the world in the concept of where it came from for you to understand where it needs to go to mm-hmm. that life is not static it's fluid yeah all right mm-hmm. so if you come from that perspective then the first thing you have to appreciate is how then do we identify self mm-hmm. and what is it about us that changes the circumstance and the surroundings around us. Mm-hmm. So you take case in point right now. You take something like the innovations you see, things like M-Pesa, mm-hmm. which is a Vodacom innovation, yeah. raising 700 million people out of poverty. Mm-hmm. This is an African, yeah. African innovation. But we are never ready to celebrate Africans. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and it pains me greatly. And, mm-hmm. and I think I, I say this right across the world. Yeah. We wait until somebody's standing in Hollywood. Yeah. Then we say that one is one of ours. But what makes us to have... <laughs> because we identify celebration mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. breaking the odds. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's what it is. To celebrate you, I need to celebrate you because of your idea. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter whether the idea gets off the ground or not. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I honestly do believe that we have this 
textbook boxed mentality. Yeah. That we only survive within a space that we are familiar to. So if mm. I asked you right now, what can we do to the younger people? What can we do with the younger people? You will only come back to me with a response based on your parallel confabulations. Mm. What mm. I have seen happening, what mm. has been happening, mm. or what is going to happen. happen yeah. Not what sounds ridiculous enough for us to try. Can we try that? Can we yeah. be ridiculous mm -hmm. enough to say we can put all young people in the schools that are not working, mm -hmm. partner with every university around the world and give knowledge for free? Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, as you're saying this, I've got a grandson. Mm. And what I find fascinating right. about him is that he would be, you know, two years old. Right. He would be playing. But the most fascinating thing, nothing is impossible for him. Mm -hmm. He's going to try it first. That's it. And we are the ones who see the impossibility, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but he's going to try it and see how he can make it work for himself. But do you know why that works? Because mm -hmm. when we are all born, we're only born out of two fears. Mm -hmm. The fear of darkness and the fear of falling. Yeah. Every other thing we've told ourselves has been based on what we learned. The fear of failure is yeah, never yeah. part of our system. Mm -mm, mm -mm. It wasn't there in the first place. Mm -mm, mm -mm. If you ask, I, I, look, I look at my kids now, and they tell you no, when power is cut off or there's load shedding, and they're like, oh, something is wrong. And I'm mm -hmm. like, ever try reading with a candle? Let's see how that works. works for you. Yeah. But how did we get out of that? It, it's like we are transferring more the lessons than we are transferring the perspective of a future. So when you talk about Agenda 2063, it is built off the idea of a technical and legal arrangement of our failures. Mm -hmm. We need better hospitals. So, yeah. Are we talking about better hospitals or more equipped hospitals? Because that's exactly what COVID tested. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have better hospitals so, yeah. than you remember. remember yes. Right? Mm. So what happened? COVID well, just reset exactly. all of it? Mm -hmm. it, it, was, it was going to be tested, tested at some yeah. point. Mm -hmm. But we are now shortchanging ourselves because we are not pushing for the best. We are pushing for only options. So even when you said talk about leadership, I don't believe leadership is wrong. You might have good leaders in bad positions, or you might have bad leaders in good positions. positions yeah. You have fought hard to cover a way for gender diversity, inclusivity, yes. and equity. Yes. Tell us about your journey. My journey starts with my grandmother. Yeah. My grandmother was the kind of woman who would see, and, and, and each time I read her books, I, I am more impressed of the fact that if you're talking of the 50s and you could be able to have seen what she has seen mm -hmm. and still believe that you could be a leader of note, yeah. I have no excuse. So she always imparted it in me. And she said, be anything and be everything. But one thing do not become. Do not become a slave of your mind to leave yourself to a world that you cannot change. And then she left me and she said, look here, it would be a shame to die without having made a major contribution to humankind. Yeah. So in my growth process, which are two different kinds of mind patterns, you either have a fixed mindset or you have a growth mindset. Mm -hmm. The fixed mindset says, I can only do what I can do. Mm -hmm. The growth mindset says, I can go beyond what you can do. It's a very competitive mindset, but mm -hmm. it's still there. Yeah. Now, growing up around her, I could see, and as you walk all through Africa, mm -hmm. the biggest thing you could see was a patriarchal system that had excluded women. And now it became an agenda for me. Why would we not have them as part of every decision we have, mm -hmm. be it in government, be it in business, be it in the education system? Mm -hmm. And then the fight began. It began with the lowest things. You could deal with mining houses and you find out that Women are excluded from even owning land. Mm -hmm. A social injustice that I personally would look at and then look at my mother, look at my grandmother, look at my sisters and wonder, how do I protect that? But I don't want to protect it for my family. I want to protect yeah. it for an entire generation. And so when I got to the US and they said, okay, we are starting a program at the State Department mm -hmm. for the African Women Entrepreneurship Program mm -hmm. that is going to see the financial empowerment of women. I was the first one to jump in. Yeah. So having worked in over 50 African countries with women, I clearly could see the exclusions. I mm. started to note there are so many governments that have ignored them. And we are saying we're moving towards a certain space. So we started to create new legal systems. Mm. We started to create new strategies towards developing women, a new contemporary approach to African feminism, that women can be included in the space. Mm -hmm. 
we have leaders like Mantatis. Yes, yes. Uh, who was uh, Sensinga Corners? Um, Mkabai. Mkabai. Yes. And it is not even, only, I mean, other stories haven't been told. No, no. But I guess in what we would maybe, I think, call ancient, mm. you know, mm. uh, and where, for instance, maybe white influence mm. or colonial influence mm. Mm. had mm. already had not yet penetrated mm. but you would find there were these institutions and women were at the forefront mm. in i guess african surroundings right this whole thing of patrick here and the way patrick is now right you know i always right. you know what sometimes say well patrick you know basically just only a male headed mm. society right. and matriarchy is but now patrick has now begun to take a different meaning mm -hmm. you know which is which is now like almost withholding on to power and subjecting mm. the other mm. you know to mm. being a minor or even non existent almost right right yes right how have we what has caused this change to our, for for us so first off it's mm. it's like take take a whole bottle of coke and shake it yeah at some point that fees when you open the can it's going to shoot right up right yes. that's exactly what happened to women mm -hmm. years and years of a system that refused them to take a space and now when the can is opened mm. dominance becomes the fall now yeah. two things are happening as you look at that the first thing is now this as much as we're talking about girl child, yes. the boy child is also coming back. Right, and, right, and, right. And it's a dangerous situation mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because we are now saying the girl child is going to be our focus, mm -hmm. but at the expense of the boy child mm -hmm. because now they're telling you, you people have been in power for too long. Mm -hmm. That's not the argument I want to put across. My argument is simple. I hold the objective view that inclusivity can happen, Yeah. but let us all take sides on the table and mm -hmm. let us say we want to work together. Yeah. And if we were to work together, then what are the issues that are coming out of the boy child and the girl child, child right. that we don't want to see it replay back? Mm -hmm. Because we are the ones who rewrote these mistakes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are the ones who refused to share our rights. We are the ones who refused to make sure that we can stand up for certain things in society. And so mm -hmm. if we are to correct that today, yeah. can we then say, okay, I invite everybody to a table and let us say, this is what we want to see, a new dispensation, mm -hmm. a devolution of power that has never been experienced. But why? The stories of things that are happening in New Zealand, we clap, good, mm -hmm. brilliant, wonderful. Mm. But when it comes to Africa, it comes to South Africa, we ignore the people who are part of that history. Mm -hmm. Name mm -hmm. the top 20 books you've read yeah. that have been bought from exclusive that are the highest rated, mm -hmm. Michelle Obama. And I love mm -hmm. the story. Yeah. But how many of our own do we feel we can support? Mm -hmm. How mm -hmm. many of our own were we taught about? Are, are we suffering from self-hate? We are, we are. It is quite easier for us to pick and accept a different notion than our own. Mm -hmm. We don't even identify with the smallest steps we've taken. You and I can sit here and celebrate each other, mm -hmm. but after what? Yeah. 40 years in the mm -hmm. industry? Mm -hmm. When you are one year in the industry, who sat back and said, but I see a future. So, you know, mm -hmm. The only person who would have seen that future is when you were still speaking lines in Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They identified with you faster mm -hmm. than when you could speak within our own could, context. Exactly, exactly. So what does that say about us? Mm -hmm. If I could put everybody in a room and everybody has a story, and I always say everybody has a story, mm -hmm. but those stories are told half and not true, and if told, they're not even told in, 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 in its own essence. Yeah. So we are suffering from the idea of how do we even take our own knowledge and monetize that? Our doctors, we are taught a system that mm. we don't even know how to monetize. Yeah. So it's not even a matter of poverty. And, and, and we laugh and question these things when the World Bank speaks. Yeah. Africa Development Bank speaks. Mm -hmm. All right. You look at what is happening around the world. And, and my question was, during a conference, how many companies have a turnover of 100 billion US dollars yeah. per year in Africa? Can you take a wild guess? There are over 400 of them. According to yeah. you and I, mm -hmm. we'd probably have said 50. Yeah. Because I don't know who these other ones Those are. Ah, yes. But it's because we have no keen interest whatsoever. But how do we bring that back? That's the question. It's yes. time to provoke the very understanding yes. that Africa is also a space. Mm -hmm. It's not just another appellation on the geographical location. No, it's mm -hmm. not. It's a space. 
that we celebrated our Wakanda movie and 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 good good idea Chadwick mm-hmm. Boseman mm-hmm. rest in peace it's a good idea good dear, yes what if it was actually filmed from us would we support it the same way um Gugi, you know, Gugi was such an influence on me because when I first uh, discovered um, decolonizing the mind, right, right, and then went to the sequel, right, right, moving the center, right, and um, you know, also I, I think the, his um, uh, detained, right, you know, m- uh, memoir in yes. prison, yes, yes, I think it just almost, I think in that confined space, mm-hmm. he almost comes back to the bigger picture right you know right and um and and basically even write a book mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know in his own language mm. you know and well that that was provoked i think even initially by mm. the the kamiruti experience yes, yes you yes, know yes. when a yes. lady came to him right and said uh, uh it was a lady teaching said right. uh, I hear you write books, and mm. by that time he's a well-known writer. Exactly. <laughs> you right. Know? Right. But the person in his own community mm. doesn't know, or even even has, hasn't even read mm. his book, and and comes to him and says, "I hear you write books," and here we are. We have our almost like our intellectual cap or abilities mm. are celebrated outside the country, mm-hmm. other than inside. Right, you know, but he, you know, kind of brought himself back, I guess, with writing the Devil on the Cross, exactly, in exactly. in Kukui. Now, you, you <clears throat> mentioned a very good, you mentioned a very good example, yes. Professor Ngugi Wa Kiongo, when he wrote his book. Fast forward fifty years later, mm-hmm. he was more notably known in the U.S. than he was in his own home country, Kenya. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then extrapolate the excerpts of his book, yeah, which was now being lectured by Professor Callistus Juma in Harvard. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then made me question that the first play that was written from his books, even at the point of it being performed, mm-hmm. it was not one of the plays that headhunters or scouts were looking for. Mm. But they were the birth of everything else you see as today, Lupita Nyong'o. Yeah. All right? Mm-hmm. That tells you something, that we refused to identify with the knowledge that came from our own. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Gungi Wationgo is one person. Mm-hmm. I could name tons of these people in Africa mm-hmm. that we have looked at their texts and we have not really borrowed from it. Mm-hmm. We have not said, can we bring it back into the education system? Mm-hmm. We have not. We are teaching more about what's happening outside. When they tell me today about climate change, and no, by no, by no means am I saying it's not important. Yeah. But the issues we suffer from, yeah. I don't think climate change is the first on my list. No. No, no. it's not. Mm-hmm. I'm still talking about issues that the very least, the poorest of the poor, have not been able to make mention of. Mm -hmm. And if government ignores that, then we keep going back in that cycle. So Mm -hmm. another government comes in, and another one comes in, and another one comes in. But we are repeating the mistakes of history. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We are not moving forward. Right. Yeah. One other thing in Gugi, uh, and especially in moving the center. Right. And... When I read that phrase, mm-hmm. it, it, you know there are certain phrases when, when, when you're reading right, and right. you come across something right. and it makes you to stop. Exactly. You know, exactly. And, you know, and ponder over it a, right. a little right. bit. Right. And in there, he talks about universality mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. comes out of locality. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. And then we find ourselves, or, you know, as young people, thinking that in order to be universal mm. you have to try and emulate something else yes or somebody or emulate american culture yes. yes how do we bring ourselves to just that appreciation of because that locality mm. that also you can play it according to the geo you know placement of a person mm. but also it can be a psychological placement of that person there's and, 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 and I like to play back with the idea that institutions play a very huge role today. Mm-hmm. Can we accept that not everybody will be a scholar of King Henry VIII's School of Public Speaking? Yeah. Because we have identified with that. Mm-hmm. We go into court and we speak like that. That, yes. Right? Mm-hmm. We, we, we notify ourselves with the, with the verbiage of much huge dictionary. Because exactly, that, that, yeah. that's, that's the diction they mm-hmm. want us to do. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then when it comes to our vernacular, mm-hmm. it's, it's not acceptable. Yeah. Can I defend you in court in vernacular? Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I was to speak to the judge, is that okay? Can mm -hmm. I defend a case in any setting if I were to walk into a corporate interview and I can only speak vernacular? Is it going to be acceptable? Be acceptable. In, yes. in the Pan-African Parliament, mm -hmm. um, Julius Malema says that, look, we could have be able to add Kiswahili mm -hmm. as a language yes. right across mm -hmm. Africa. Yeah. And it impresses me because I speak it. Yeah. My issue is, as we say these things today, mm -hmm. are we going to inculcate this into the system? Are we saying them because now we're at a point where we, we, we need to rally the masses? Yeah, score points. Exactly. Mm -hmm. A universal consciousness, like you say, mm -hmm. but the locality of bringing it back to a point where it actually creates an identity mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. And there's this terminology we use very quite often, decolonizing. Yeah. The mind, mm -hmm. decolonizing, mm -hmm. and decolonizing in itself. Mm -hmm. It's problematic. It's problematic <laughs> because you you are yeah. you are now talking about something that not fully have we come to the point that we've understood it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are decolonizing systems, mm -hmm. but refusing to decolonize the very things that intimated that system. system. Mm -hmm. If we are to be honest, then we must take a historical journey. And look at the things and the aspirations that led us into self-independence. If we are, to be honest, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. let us run down that race. race yes. And then come back and say, yes, these were the reasons. Yeah. We were building systems that could accept all. We were building systems that could include all. We were building systems that could accept all. And if that be the case, then what would be the choir crucible of a South Africa of the 21st century? century. Prof, it is such an honor thank to you. have had this conversation with you. Thank you so much. And thank you for sharing your time and thank your you. knowledge. And I just hope that one day I will carry you with me <laughs> and walk through the dark corridors, you know, of our stagnation mm. and go in there and maybe even come with the power of knowledge yes. and, and begin to open up all these streams, these tributaries that would actually become the glow mm. Mm. of our environment. No, thank you for having me. And I think in, in closing, mine is, mm -hmm. I, salute, I salute everybody who in their own little space is trying to transform something. Yeah. And I know a few rectitude of good men, good women mm -hmm. who are doing that. Yeah. Yeah. But we stand alone and we work in silence. Yeah. Africa is asking for a time where if we are not united, yeah. and Africa is not poor, yeah. it's just in an advanced state of decay. Yeah. If we are not going to stand together, we might as well believe that everything that was said from the first father of Pan-Africanism mm -hmm. to today yeah. is a pipe dream indeed. Yeah. It is a pipe dream. dream. And again, this younger generation will sit on this same seat you and I have sat, and they will repeat this conversation. The time is now or never, yeah. and I think we owe it to everybody. We stand on the ashes of our forefathers. If we are to make anything correct, yeah. then Africa is no longer supposed to be a conversation about its rising, about its, its determination. determination. It is time that Africa becomes as powerful as it was intended to be, but first, by understanding who we are. Prof. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you Thank for you having for your me. words of wisdom. Thank you so much. Well, you've heard it. Africa is in a state of progressive decay. How do we freeze that? How do we stop that? Teach yourself. And as you teach yourself and you acquire knowledge for yourself, that is the beginning that each and every one of us can start doing now. Well, I'm Salom Ekanube, and I'm saying, Salangale Arivedechi. How about it? <laughs>